Um, I, I said to Colin as we were walking up here, what should I talk about? And he, he sort of said, well, talk about um, Abmax 50th birthday. I mean, there's a lot of anniversaries around. It's, it's JWT's or J. Walter Thompson Company, as I prefer to call it, uh, which I think they're going to follow my advice after 150 years. No, uh, it's their 150th anniversary. Uh, it's at Maps 50. It's WPP's um, 30th next year. And uh, tonight, actually, one of the reasons I can't stay to see the two great and entertaining speakers is because, um, or only part of them, is it's the 20th anniversary of the WPP Fellowship Program which I remember Robin White came up to me and said, it's a great scheme. He said, it's, it's the Sorrell Scholarship Program. It wasn't, but it was, that, was, that was the interpretation of it. But in a funny way, um, the WP Fellowship Scheme, which if you don't know, we, we're celebrating 20, uh, 20 years of it, which is amazing. It's gone, it has gone very, very quickly. But the idea was that we school first-degree graduates and second degree graduates, so postgraduates, in all forms of communication. So the, the theory was, and we put it into practice, was that you would take first degree graduates or second degree, and they could come from art schools or film schools or as well as business schools or liberal arts or whatever it happened to be, or science or engineering. And they would spend a year, the three year program, a year on a different continent in a different discipline. So you might start at J. Walter Thompson Company in uh, London on, on advertising, go to Ogilvy, uh, Ogilvy One in New York on, uh, on digital or direct or whatever, and then go, say, to Millwood Brown in Shanghai uh, on, on what we now call data investment management. And the idea was to build multi, a multidisciplinary approach. And so, you know, I'm delighted to be here um, on the 50th anniversary of AMAP and the 20th anniversary of the WPP Fellowship Program, because in a sense, we're celebrating the same thing, promoting excellence in brand communication. Now, the, the, I'm gonna say a little bit about what I think may be the future of brand communication. I've been proved wrong on a number of occasions. I, I contributed to the October is issue that Colin mentioned. But before I do that, I should you know, point out, I, I was reading an article that Stephen King wrote, wrote in 1967. In 1964, I was struggling through the, f the, the second year of my economics degree at Cambridge, which was, I can assure you, a struggle. I got a 2-2 in the days when a 2-2 meant something. Not, not, not your grade inflation nowadays. I mean, a 2-2 in my day, certainly worth a 2-1, maybe even a lower first, I would say. Uh, but now I was struggling not being a mathematical economist in 1964. But Stephen King in 1967 was, was writing, and, and you referred to Stanley Pollitt as well as being the a father of, of brand planning and brand communication. A lot of fathers and maybe, and very few mothers actually that, uh, that are claimed, but certainly Stephen, I think, was the father. And when we first took over JWT in 1987, uh, Jeremy Bullmore and uh, Stephen King were being shown the exit by the, uh, the Young Turks. You know, it's the old bull, young bull syndrome. <laughs> The youngsters wanted to take over the, um, the firm and they were pushing, actually it was quite an interesting story, they were pushing Stephen King and Jeremy out, which I thought was sacrilege. Here, there was I from outside JWT, and you're going to hear from Guy, uh, Guy Murphy. I mean, we celebrated Guy, if Guy is a bit there. What was the anniversary, Guy, that we celebrated that you recognised whilst you were at BBH, but nobody at J. Walter Thompson recognised at the time that you celebrated? It was an anniversary of Stephen's work. And actually, it's interesting that the people outside the institution often recognize the strengths of the institution rather than the people inside. So I, I just recognize formally Stephen's contribution as one of the founding fathers of account planning uh, and one of, actually one of uh, AMAP's earliest contributors. Now, just a little bit, just finally, on the way that, that we see things going or that uh, uh, I see things going, and maybe I've been influenced heavily by something that we did this afternoon because we were doing a, a presentation for one of our top 10 clients. And it was interesting because it involved for the first time a heavy technology piece. I mean, I, I won't go into the detail of who it was and 
uh, for or, or what it was for, I shouldn't do on the grounds of confidentiality, but it was very interesting because it was the first time, and I participated or will participate in it uh, directly and indirectly, we were taking the, the classic advertising and marketing piece, basically embodied by a CMO, and the technology and innovation piece embodied in the CIO or the CTO. So if I just jog back for a minute when we started WPP in 1985, we started below the line. Uh, we then, through the, through the acquisition of uh, the JWT Group, as it was known then, remember it was the advertising agency, it actually had another advertising agency inside. It had the public relations firm, Hill and Knowlton. It had Media Research Bureau, MRB. And so what, what JWT was wrestling with at the time, and when the agency started, say, in Barclay Square, it, you know, you walked into the agency and you had the advertising, you had the creative department, the planning department, the account department, you had an operations planning department. They designed the Mr. Kipling factory. Um, amazingly, they had operations research people who could design a factory as well as a brand. It had a PR department, Lexington PR. It had BMRB inside it, British Market Research Bureau. So, even in the 60s, when Anthony Sampson was writing about JWT as being the University of Advertising, JWT as an agency here in the UK, for example, was wrestling how it integrated its, its communication. That then, so you started with JWT on its own, J. Walter Thompson Company on its own, and then that morphed into J. Walter Thompson Group or JWT Group, in which you had H&K, Hill and & Knowlton, and MRB. And then it's morphed in turn into WPP. And there have been a number of steps in the way. We're in Mindshare's offices. And in the, I guess, the late 80s, early 90s, the problem with the, the, J, the J. Walter Thompson model was it was dominated by advertising people. It was dominated probably by planners, creatives, and suits. And the media people, uh, objected to that. The media people wanted to, to, to exercise UDI. Uh, they, you know, people like uh, the Rodez family in Spain, um, it, the, the, um, the similar operations in the United States, Western International with uh, Dennis Holt and Michael Kassan. Uh, the the Grow Brothers in France had established these media independents, and actually, advertising agencies like J. Walter Thompson Company and Ogilvy, which had become part of our group in '89, were losing media business on a significant uh, significant basis. And so, starting to specialise, to to disintegrate, and specialise became uh, the way of going forward. So, what we did was build much stronger specialisations. And the irony about what then happened was that when WPP came along, what we did was to take the specializations and sort of reintegrate them, what we called the full service agency of the 21st century. So you had JWT initially trying to do it on its own. And then we split it apart. We took creative, planning, media, and separated them and strengthened them as core functions. So as if you think about it as sort of the pillars of a temple, you tried to strengthen the pillars, and then you tried to strengthen the roof. You didn't have weak pillars in which you tried to put a strong roof on, because otherwise it would collapse. So you strengthened the functions, advertising, creative, media, PR, research, whatever it is, and then you started to try and integrate it. And what we've tried to do subsequent to that is to have two integration functions in terms of planning. The real, the real communications planners that we have at WPP now are the 45 people who account for actually about six, six billion of our $19 billion of revenue, which are our top 45 clients, who are integrating what we do for WPP for those clients on a worldwide basis. That's at one level. At a country level, because we're operating in 111 countries and that's complex, Coca-Cola, for example, operates in 220 countries. What we're trying to do at a country level is look at people look at acquisitions and look at clients on a much more individualistic basis on a client by client basis. So you have two sort of horizontal integrators, those client people operating globally and local people, I mean local country managers operating on a country level. Now, that's where we are at the moment. 
I was struck by what we did this afternoon because I think there is a, another step that we're about to take. If I look at WPP as a whole, the $19 billion of revenue, there's about four or five in media. There's about four or five in what we call data investment management. There's about, let's say, another five in digital. And the balance of about another four is in the classic Don Draper stuff that we would have recognized in 64 or when, when Stephen wrote that article in 67. But it's only 25%. So what I think is the next step is what we tried to do this afternoon on this pitch. And that is to integrate what we're doing, not just across the marketing functions as we know them, but in the technology functions as well. And I think we have a spectacular advantage as an industry because we understand the touchy-feely stuff. The people on the technology side don't understand that. And the advantage is that we come at, it, come at it with that side of the brain that is more emotional, uh, more psychological, uh, more intangible than the tangible. But there's a fusion of the two that I think is going to become uh, remarkably powerful uh, and relevant. Because we are starting to deal with CMOs, CFOs, chief procurement officers, but also chief information officers and chief technology officers. And I'll just finish on one thing. I was struck by an article that I just read was coming over here. McDonald's and Coca-Cola pre presented their results uh, today. And the results were not good. And net, 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 we, we can argue whether McDonald's are positioned in the right way from a product point of view, whether Coca-Cola is positioned in the right way from a product point of view. But net net, the pressures that I'm talking about, particularly on the cost side of the equation, are going to intensify. So the need to integrate and to think about communications planning in a much broader sense than we ever have done before, I think is going to become extremely important. So the sort of initiatives that we're going to take, apart from being more content orientated, as you've seen recently, or more uh, data investment and management or, is it, uh, orientated, as you've seen recently, with things like Rentrack or AppNexus or more other things that we should, should do, is to invest more heavily in the content side, as we've also been doing, and also, obviously, in the technology side, too. So the sort of stuff that we do with AppNexus or Rentrack, AppNexus in particular, with Zaxis, and our so-called programmatic platform, although it's not really a program, it's much more than that because it involves technology and data in a much more sophisticated way, are going to become more and more important. So on the 50th anniversary of AdMap, I think we've gone through a number of stages. It's very, I have to say it's very challenging, but it's really very exciting. And it, it really involves, actually I was reading Stephen's article. When you read Stephen's article that wrote in 1967, a lot of the elements there the scientific elements there, are even more relevant today than they were when he first wrote, wrote about it uh, in that almost 50 years ago in the case of that article. So congratulations to Admap. Uh, thank you to, to Marco and everybody at uh, Mindshare for hosting us here. And on to the two great and entertaining speakers. And I'm sorry I wasn't great and I'm sorry I wasn't entertaining. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>